Hi everyone, I hope that you are well. In this video, I'm going to share with you what I got up to in the surf town of El Tunco in El Salvador. I was super lucky to have some friends visit town these few days who were traveling down from Guatemala, which was so nice that I had the opportunity to hang out with them. An El Salvadorian beer, which is really, really, really good. <laughs> I don't normally drink beer, but these ones I can put up with. <laughs> This is El Tunco Beach Hostel. They don't have any dorms here, which is funny because it is a hostel. So we've had a private room. The one that we had previously was $60 a night. This one was, this is $70 a night. So about 15 to $20 per person, which isn't too bad. And honestly, that's kind of one of the cheapest you can find in town. El Tunco's not super cheap at all. Well, this place has been really, really nice to be fair um, because it's just chilled. There's like several pools, there's hammocks and chill out areas. I would not say that it's like a backpacker's place by any means. If you're here with some friends or some other backpackers who you've already met, then it's really nice and it's in a good location as well. It's not too far down the road. I'm going to attempt to open a smile pie with a lighter. Maybe like there. Yay! <laughs> Party! Party! <laughs> Cheers, everyone! Cheers! Cheers. 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 Happy days! <laughs> So today I'm with Mitch and Beck. <laughs> we're literally just waiting on the side of the road because today we're going on a little adventure um, to Tamanique Waterfalls, which are the famous waterfalls in the area. It's about 25 minutes away from El Tunco. I still have my motorbike today. I actually have to return it. So I'm gonna motorbike there and then go to El Zonte afterwards to return it. And these guys are getting an Uber, which is why we're waiting on the side of the road for the Uber. Because they, they obviously do have Uber here, but they're kind of far and few in between. So if you order one, you might be waiting a while, which is kind of what's happening. But the taxi, we are. So the Uber is $7 for a one way from El Tunco to Tamanique, but we asked about a taxi and that was gonna be $20 one way. So that's when they were like, well, it's definitely worth it to wait for the Uber then. Uh, tú eres la, el muchacho que pueden uh, ayudarme con mi moto. No le arranca. Mi, no, no, el amarillo. Y no, no sé qué es el problema uh, porque uh, fui manejando y para, para. Uh, pero tal vez es sin gasolina, pero no sé qué es el problema. Y tal vez puedes. No arranca. ¿Mm? No de estar, nada. No. So basically, my bike stopped working. Oh. <laughs> no pude, uh, hacer eso. Okay, okay. Gracias. Well, that's never happened to me before. I've never had a moto breakdown, and then it was very embarrassing because he kind of just turned it on and it worked. And I was like, oh, why couldn't I do that? But anyway, at least it's still working, and I'll fill up with gasoline in this town. I found Mitch and Beck again. Luckily, they waited for me. I didn't know if they would because I was taking a bit of time. We did arrive at the entrance for the Cascada hike, and they said that you now have to get a guide this is like a new rule that they didn't used to have and so we've had to come to this office where we've all had to pay seven dollars each and it includes our guide nelson who is going to take us to the tamanique waterfalls you didn't used to have to have a guide it used to just cost two dollars fifty for entry and you could just do this hike by yourself i feel like it's like a very very new rule you know when you just don't know if they're having you on though and whether you can do it yourself and they're just promoting this but there was like very official people stopping us so i guess it is just a new rule just kind of frustrating but i think it's just to support the local culture and also like to keep everything in good shape and make sure that the tourists aren't destroying things which i guess all in all is a good thing it's a little bit annoying though <laughs> oh really i didn't even know that they existed show us your props 
because they got like a back to them and like grip the other box. Oh, so Mitch has performance. What are they? Performance? Performance crocs. They're like Merrill ones. Hydro oh, Merrill Crocs. Yeah, yeah. So they're not the croc. They're not the croc brand. No, no. Oh. So comfy as well. like. Have you guys heard of Merrill Crocs before? I have not. Ah, oh, that's where we're going. You can't see it too well now, but the walk's getting a little bit steep. It's not too sketchy just yet, but uh, <laughs> we were warned about this. How beautiful is this? I love a water for me. Really nice. On to the next waterfall. Would you believe there's one more? He said, the, <laughs> la ultima, above the one that we were just at. They just keep going. It's great, it's a proper full excursion. And now I go back on what I said earlier. We're actually really glad that we've got the guide because I don't think we would have known where we were going if we didn't have uh, Nelson. Oh, so we're at like the top of the waterfall that we just set. So we're now back in the town of Tamanique. Those waterfalls were so good. It was fully, fully worth it. And like I said, actually really glad of the guide in the end because it meant that we did get to go to all of the waterfalls. We knew where we were jumping, was gonna be like safe jumping and all of this. So yeah, really, really good. Now we are presented with the problem of the fact that I don't think my motor has any gas in it. Um, and there's no gas stations in this town or even close by. And so I'm like, oh shit, well, I've got to return my motorbike. So how am I going to do this? Anyway, the guy in the office, for the, like the Tamanique tourism office, said maybe I can call my friend and get him to bring you just like a gallon and you can give him $7. So I was like, oh yes, that would be really, really cool if you could do that. Do you know what? I love countries like this for reasons like that. Like everyone just kind of leans on each other and you just call your friends for favors and all of this. And it just all seems to work out like that in a very non-official way. But yeah, I feel like you can just always get yourself out of a sticky situation because people are always willing to help you, which is just so, so nice. So I'm just gonna grab my motorbike now, bring it to the office and hope that they can just help me out with a bit of gasoline to bring it back to the rental place. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Drop the scooter off and now, I am, um, I need to get back to El Tunco. I'm in El Zonte, that's where I rented the scooter. So I'm gonna do a little hitchhiking. And I'm hoping that either a car or a bus comes to pick me up. Let's see how we go. Don't know how long this is gonna take, but hopefully not too long. Okay, like maybe if I like walk and do it, it might be better. I find hitchhiking the most embarrassing thing in the world. I don't know why, I just feel mortified doing it. <laughs> please tell me I'm not the only one. I'm just like, oh, someone please come help me. Do you know what? I'm gonna walk as I go, because then if no one picks me up, at least I might eventually get there, like, you know, on foot. This could take a while. No. Okay. Diez minutos. Okay, perfecto. There's gonna be a bus coming or a, a little, little shuttle bus in 10 minutes. So, don't have to hitchhike. Got on the bus. Bye bye chicken bus. That was my first chicken bus experience in El Salvador. And it cost me 50 cents, two quarters, which is pretty good. And it's dropped me right uh, at the gateway to El Tunco, so it's now just a two, three minute walk to my accommodation. Happy days. Okay, so the hitchhike didn't work. I'm not mad about that. I really hated sticking my thumb out for a short amount of time. But the guy who I made friends with on the side of the road who was also waiting to go in the direction that I was going in, he said to me, hitchhiking's kind of hard here. 
it's not going to be easy for you to get picked up because people aren't used to it. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Because I thought it would be the kind of place where everyone would be hitchhiking along the coast. So, but the thing is, there is uh, regular shuttles, regular buses that do go along the coast. We waited around 15 to 20 minutes, but normally they do come more frequently than that. Yeah. Happy days, and now back in Altunco. I've been coming to the same place for breakfast. Well, I say for breakfast, for coffee every single morning here. It's called Point Break Cafe. I love Buenos Dias. Obviously, I get an iced caramel latte. And they do a really good one there. I like when they don't put too much caramel in. Sometimes places can really overdo it and overpower it, but this is just, it's really good. And it's a good reason to stay in El Tunco for more days. To be honest, this is actually probably one of the destinations on my entire South America trip, which I've stayed in the most. And I've actually literally just had days doing nothing here. Like when my friends were here a couple of days ago, you know, Jack and the Irish couple, we literally just hung out by the beach the whole day, drinking beers and doing nothing more. And I think sometimes when you're traveling, you just like to have days like that and just not be go, go, go. It's been glorious, honestly. And Alton Cove has been a really nice place to kind of have that lifestyle because it is very slow and laid back here. Anyway, now we've moved accommodation and we're staying in Papaya Lodge which is kind of like, I'd say the main place that the backpackers stay because they have the most amount of dormitorios, dom, dom rooms, <laughs> Spanglish going on here. This is the reception. It's breakfast time currently and you get free breakfast here every morning. So everyone's just getting their grub. Okay, uh, I'll say really good. So this is the free breakfast that comes with the room. I actually think it's a really good deal because for the dorm bed, we pay $15 a night, which you know, isn't the cheapest of dorm beds, but there's nothing cheaper in town, honestly. But it comes with this free breakfast and it's pretty decent. You actually have three options between, this is like the traditional El Salvadorian breakfast that comes with coffee, or you can get toast and butter. And what was the third option? Cereal? Cereal and milk. Just yeah. like cereal and milk. So like, obviously this is the best option, but you've got options. Hello. I love when a dorm room has like an almost form full length mirror, just great. Anyway. This is the dorm room here in Papaya Lodge. It's pretty basic, let's be honest. Um, there's not too much special about it, but you do have your lockers here. You don't have a personal light or shelf or plug, but I don't think that there is anywhere in El Tunco which has a hostel like that. If anyone out there is from El Salvador and is thinking of making a hostel, please can you do so in El, in El Tunco? Because I really feel like there is a market for like a really good quality hostel here. Just saying, please and thank you to those that want to do this. <laughs> this is where we're renting a surfboard and a bodyboard between the three of us. The bodyboard is costing $10 for the day for renting and the surfboard is costing $15 for the day for renting. So between us, it's going to be like less than $10 each. Uh, but it just means that we're all going to get a little go on everything, which is quite nice. Excited? Sure. So it's now time to leave El Tunco. I've got the backpack on, Bex here. We're on the side of the road uh, because our next stop is gonna be Santa Ana. Also in El Salvador, we have to kind of like get two buses, one to San Salvador and one away. But I've really enjoyed El Tunco. I've actually been here or in this kind of coastal area for a whole seven days, which is one of the longest that I've stayed in anywhere in this entire trip. It's somewhere which you can very easily get stuck in, but also just like there's loads to do. It's an amazing town just to chill. I've met some really cool people here. I like it a lot. And I've just had like a great first impression into El Salvador. It's great. And I'm really, really excited for the rest of this trip and to see what else El Salvador has to offer. But anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.